What is a new work week when everything you do is work? 8.4% of today's workforce is deeply involved with several different jobs. The number one reason, inflation. I read an article about a mother of three who's making more money than any other time in her life, but still can't afford the high rent and food prices. And what's the true cost here? Well, the cost is you've lost out on family time and mental downtime. Now, the new kick is to protect yourself from being laid off. So many businesses, they really just don't care. They just lay people off in order to keep the business above water. That's how I became addicted to having multiple jobs. Coming from the world of radio, where your career is decided by ratings. So the goal was to create a huge financial net to keep from having to lose what little we already had. It's time that we're not going to get back. Now, my mother was no different. She was always working somewhere deep into the late night hours. Now, before Google, we had to carry calendars with us, whether it was in our briefcase, maybe it was in your back pocket or in your purse, but we had to have a physical calendar. And God forbid there was ever a change. There's just not enough whiteout in the world. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer, the silent wolf. I sit beneath the brush of a tree and I just watch and observe life and how it moves. You study it, you listen to it, you learn from it, and then you create conversations. This is The Daily Mess. The inner vision versus reality's tiny nibbles. I don't believe people walk into their day blinded by a no-need-whatever attitude. It's human nature to pull off what I call writing the story before it happens. The inner vision. This is how we see it playing out. And like a dream, it either backfires into a nightmare or we choose to overthink it, expecting to win the lottery. Learning how to control your inner theories, believe it or not, it's a very powerful tool in your tool chest, in the way of understanding your relationships and the future. But my question is, is your inner vision instinct? The answer is yes. Many spiritual people rely on their inner visions to help generate a human connection. It begins with receiving and then sharing. It's reality's nibbles that tend to push us away. The inner vision versus reality's tiny nibbles. Where do you find yourself on a daily basis? Are you inside planning things out, listening, observing, acting things out a little bit at a time without reality shoving you back in the box? Having that inner vision is confidence. It's courage. It's accepting that, hey, look, just because we said it was going to go this way, it changed. And now we're going to go this direction. I learned that valuable tool when I was at 95.1 doing morning drive. And the general manager said, this is radio, dude. There is change every day. We can't get to the top of the ratings unless we make changes. If you don't like change, use your inner vision and see if you can move things around you. You can't. You've got to be able to change your inner visions and prepare for the potential of there being more change. Most people just walk away. How do you handle situations like that when the change is outnumbering whatever you have left in your source of energy? Do you walk away or do you buckle down and say, look, my inner vision, my instinct, my intention is to do this. And although we may sway just a little bit, the skyscraper isn't going to tumble to the ground. Learning how to trust that inner vision I do a practice called stream thinking 10 minutes every day. I sit down and write for 10 minutes, whatever is moving through me. And the reason for that is to build a trust barrier with the inner vision, stream thinking, understanding that when there is change, I probably saw it long before it got here. Practice it. It is a tool that is going to make you greater than what you were yesterday. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.